Welcome back to Site Tech and Mountain GCS 900 training videos. Let's do an infill design. There's an option between flat plane and sloping planes that you can still do with the GCS system, the older system. As you can see right here, I've got the grader sitting in a spot where I want to create a flat plane, a flat design. So I've got it sitting just about the elevation that I want in the blade. What you do is go into your menu button right here, the waffle button. In here where you would select designs, you hit OK. And you've got all the designs that you currently have loaded on your box for the job sites. Over here, you've got new level and new slope. You can hit the soft key next to new level. And in here, you got to read carefully on the coordinate system. What it's asking for is use last, which is my Site Tech Wheeler training site. If I use that at the bottom here, it says uses the coordinate system based upon the last loaded design. This will maintain your northing, easting, and elevations. So if you're trying to key in an elevation for the job site, or you want to stay with your northing eastings and elevations generalized from the job site, you go ahead and leave it on this right here. So if not, and you go down to auto create on load, that'll automatically create a coordinate system based on your position. And that is most likely a state plane. It'll be a state plane wherever you're at. So it'll be close on elevations, but it won't be the exact. So we'll leave the last and hit okay. Now, if you know what the elevation is on your job site and you're trying to key in something off a set of plans or whatever, go for it. If not, you can just set your blade down and use the left or right tip and hit here. And it'll auto-populate the elevation for the blades out at that moment. In here, you can hit OK and actually give it a name. So if you want, it's kind of a pain to key them in, but you could go ahead and just go right here and put in maybe pad. We'll put in pad. Oops. And then we'll hit OK. What it does is it creates a design in your file now and it names it level. So we'll go ahead and hit OK and come back out. And you'll see that right where my machine's sitting, my design that I see on the map is gone. But now I've got a flat plane right off that left tip. Now I can go ahead and turn on autos and it'll hold that elevation. So that's how you create your own flat plane. You can still vertically offset from there too. You can come in here and offset up or down if it wasn't the exact elevation and you can turn your autos on. So what you would do if you want to do a um, point to point and a sloping plane is those are the two different options. You come back in your menu here and under design, hit OK and go to new slope. Over here, you're going to use the exact same last coordinate that I just used. And now you have a couple different options. One is point to point, which means that you're physically going to take whatever machine you're in to two different spots. Even if they're two different elevations, it'll create a line in between those two spots. Maybe if you're digging in drain boxes or sewer lines, you want to go from box to box or point to point. Or if you're just trying to make a road, you can do that. The other option down here is point um, method. So you can change it from point to direction. We'll go ahead and do it both ways. So right now, point one, I'm going to leave the machine where it's at, and I'm going to hit here off my left tip. Here, auto populates a northing easting elevation. Now what I'm going to do is physically take the grader to a completely different spot on the job site. And then I'm going to go to point two, and I'm going to hit here. Now I've got another northing easting elevation. What I can do is give it a cross slope now too, it, meaning from my center line, I can break it into different points if I want or leave it level. Just to show you what I'll do is put in maybe a 4% on that one and a four on this one. And you gotta pay attention to these slopes because that one is gonna slope to the left. This one is gonna slope to the right based on hitting this icon. So I'm gonna give it a crown if you will. Once I go out, I can call it slope one, leave it at that. And now I've got slope one in my option and it is named a slope. Go ahead and whoop. we'll go ahead and load that slope one and come out. So now I've got an actual line that created in between the two different points that I went to. The body of the machine's off just a little bit here, but it's based off of the GPS receivers, the dual. So it is a straight line square with the blade. If I go to my cross section, you can see that I've got a true left and right crown off of that and an alignment. So now I can turn my autos on and still cut this the way that it needs to go in between those two different points. That's how you do point to point. Now on the next option, if you go back in here, new level, or excuse me, uh, design and go to new slope, and I'm gonna use create or use less, when you change it on the method here to point and direction, 
you'll notice on direction it's asking for a degree, basically, right here, a degree. Which way is your machine facing? Because what point in direction does is it's a single point that I record, a northing, easting, and an elevation, but I don't take the machine to a separate spot. That's where I'm just going to say, okay, and my general direction that I'm facing, I want to just slope up or down a certain degree. So in order to do this, you kind of need to know what that degree is first. Because if you go to your main screen, you'll see the grader is facing that way. What you do is on your main menu here, you would go and set the degrees. And the way that you know what that is on your main screen here is to hit the play button, go all the way to the very back here. And on this one, I have heading turned on right now, 12 degrees. If that's not turned on, the way that you turn that on is have your machine, your, your screen in manager's mode. Go into the menu, and manager's mode is any of these that have the red dots in here. There's one down here that's called text items. In text items, you have your plan view, cross section, plural file, there are all these buttons here. For the text view, if you click that one, that shows what's in here. If it's not turned on, just go down to heading and actually check that on right here. And then you have heading, the 3D heading needs to be turned on. Once that's on, once again, you'll know that I'm at 12 degrees. So I'm going to go back in, select the design, go to new slope, and go through that process now. That coordinate system that I've been using, and I'm going to change it to point and direction. So right here, off my right tip, we'll do right tip, I'm going to say here. I'm going to say here, northing, easting, elevation, but in direction, I'm going to go ahead and put in 12 degrees. And down here, I'm going to put in what percentage I want it to go up or down. So let's say that I want it to drop 6% down in front of me. You have to put a minus in there. You have to go down till you hit a minus, go over until you hit 6. So I can give it a cross slope if I want to, or I can just leave it level. So what I'm going to do is maybe just off the left side, I'll go ahead and put in maybe a 4%. And on the right side, we'll go ahead and put in maybe a 4%. But I'm going to pitch that one to the right. Same thing, left and then right. Go ahead and hit OK. We'll call it slope 2. And then I've got slope 2 in here, named a, or under a slope option. Hit OK. Come out. And now on here, I've got the same thing where I've got an alignment in front of me, but from my cross section view, now you can see it's broke in the middle, but I've also got it dropping down in front of me. So I'm still pretty well zeroed out where the blade is, but it's dropping 6% down in front of me. So that's how you do point and direction. The other thing I wanted to show you is these designs are going to fill up really quick in your memory. When you start doing a lot of these pads and slopes, they're going to start just filling up in here. I understand that they're going to be made quick and they're going to be useless after a while. In order to get rid of designs, you need to be in manager's mode once again, and then you put a thumb drive down in the bottom corner right here. Slip the thumb drive in, and then in here you've got an advanced option in manager's mode that will allow you to hit this button right here. And you got to be really careful on here. Make sure you read what you're doing in here. Do not just get button pushy in here. You would think delete files would be the one that you want, but you don't. Because in here, these are machine measure up files. Please do not delete any machine measure up files in here because then we have to reload them back on the box or you have to find who has those. The one that you want is delete designs. In delete designs allows you to pick the designs you want to get rid of. So right here, this pad, I can come up here and check that one. And then I can also go down to slope one and two. So right here, I can check that one and I can go down and check that one. This is how you get rid of designs when you're done with them. And you go ahead and hit OK and it'll warn you, are you sure you want to do this? And you can say yes, it'll do it. You can pull the thumb drive out or hit OK. I usually just pull the thumb drive out and now I'm back and I do not have a design here. So now I can just load up an existing design that I have and come back out and everything is back to where it's supposed to be. So hopefully this helped with creating your own infield designs in the old GCS 900. It's still a very, very handy program. Um, it's a little overshadowed by Earthworks um, because of all of its flashy pizzazz, but GCS 900 can still do a lot of things that are really cool if you just know how to do it. So. Hopefully this helped from SiteTech Intermountain on the GCS 900 system infill designs.